Welcome to your introduction to ceramics. This reviews everything I think you need to know about clay as we get into ceramics. Your learning objective is to distinguish the features of clay, which are the general principles of clay, and the common processes used in ceramics. If you're looking at that little moving image there, you're gonna learn how to do that eventually with the clay. So what is clay? It's particles of decomposed rock combined with water to create a malleable body, which is fired in a kiln to fuse the particles into a stone-like state. So when it's fired, it becomes permanent. What does malleable mean? It means able to be shaped by hand or a tool. So where does clay come from? Well, it, turns, it starts from dirt and eventually it's turned into clay using various processes. But we can get clay from the ground, specifically our earth. It, it's a result of the breakdown of the earth's rocks and it's also reprocessed at a factory. So the clay that we use has been reprocessed at a facility. So what is clay made of? It's made of three basic ingredients. Silica, which is kind of like sand, and so when it's heated, it becomes glass. Alumina, which is similar to soil that helps give it some body to the clay, and water. This makes the clay moldable. Water is really important in ceramics. So what is ceramics? This is our general definition. It's the art of making functional and art objects from clay. There's different types of ceramic ware, and you're familiar with some of them. We have tableware such as mugs and cups and vessels such as platters and bowls. We have decorative ceramic ware. These, would thing, these are things that just look nice. There's figurative sculpture. There's also just sculptural ceramic ware, like these are our fine art objects. So let's go over the general principles of ceramics. Basically, these principles determine what you can do with clay in certain situations and what you cannot do with the clay for various reasons. So our first principle is that clay has plasticity, which means it can be molded. If you've ever heard of the term of neuroplasticity, that means our brains are plastic. It means we can learn new things. Plasticity comes from the actual stage of clay, which is called plastic. Clay is plastic when moist, but becomes hard when fired in a kiln. Clay does not contain plastic. Keep that in mind. It's just a term that we use. So after firing the clay in the kiln, the clay becomes permanent, which means we can't do anything with it other than glaze it or paint it. Once it's permanent, we can't crush it up and reuse it again. It's gone through a chemical change. Clay shrinks as it dries. This means it loses moisture. The water evaporates, so it actually shrinks a little bit. You won't really see the shrinkage, but it does slightly shrink, which does ultimately determine what we can and cannot do with the clay. And some clays contain grog, which is crushed or fired clay that is added to reduce shrinkage and add texture. The clay that we use has a little bit of grog in it. This is why I pointed out. These, these are some pictures of different types of grog. When the clay is being processed, this grog, grog becomes mixed in. So if you look at our clay and you notice there's like little speckles of sand, that's the grog. And if you're hearing me say the term firing clay, what we mean is we put the clay inside a kiln such as this, and then we fire it at a very, very high temperature. You're gonna learn about that later but the, the work literally glows in the kiln because it's fired at such a high degree. 